you are probably aware that there have been other moments in the history of our world in which diseases and illnesses have swept across the globe, killing thousands of people and literally holding the rest of humanity hostage. There was a flu pandemic that happened in 1918, the Spanish flu pandemic. And are you seeing the bottom line there? 50 to 100 million people were killed as a result of the Spanish flu. Now, of course, some of you are saying, Neil, in 1918, obviously it was a different time. Medicine was being discovered. Civilization was primitive compared to where we are now. And you're absolutely right, that's true. But it doesn't take away from the fact that history has shown that these things have happened. And yet, even though tragic losses occurred, humanity has rebounded. We are in the middle of this generation's Spanish flu, if you want to call it that, with the coronavirus. We are in the middle of a difficult time. Thousands of people have lost their lives due to this disease and the way in which it has affected and changed our lifestyle will be felt for many many years to come possibly even through the next generation but there is one thing that happened in that spanish flu pandemic there's one thing that happened in all major world events that took its toll on the human race and that is this Christ shows up in the middle of the chaos God shows up in ways we don't expect in the middle of trying times Jesus the love that he has for us is shown is felt in so many ways sometimes new and different ways in the middle of humanity's worst moments did you ever think five ten years ago that we would be using digital communication social media zoom conversations as a way to stay in touch lift each other up, hold each other accountable, pray for each other? No, of course not. But that's how this particular moment in our history is being defined. How Christ is showing up in the middle of chaos. I heard a speaker a couple of weeks ago on my computer tell me that Christ is showing up in three ways during this particular pandemic. The first one is this, Christ is showing up in comfort. Christ is showing up in comfort. If you're in our youth ministry, if, you, if you're in our church, you've heard myself and you've heard our pastor, Pastor Lee, say before that we go through difficult times, not because God wants to point the finger at us and go, ha ha, you didn't listen to me, now you're gonna get sick, no. That is definitely not how God works. God gives us strength. God works through difficult moments in our life so that we can take our experiences and pass them on to other people. If you have a loved one who has been diagnosed with the coronavirus, then you then can in turn help someone else whose family has been infected by the coronavirus. If you have been affected with a job loss, if you have been affected by having little money or not as much money to spend, you can then help other people who are going through the same thing. This particular time, this particular disease pandemic is showing that Christ works in us through 
comfort that Christ works through us in the ability for us to take what we have learned and what we have experienced and pass it on to someone else. Christ also works through suffering. Christ works through suffering. It is in difficult moments that our faith is grown. That we are able to feel the presence of God in our minds, in our hearts, in our spirits more. That we draw closer to him. Our church has also talked about moments in which times of difficulties lead to times of spiritual booming. In that in order for you to grow, God sometimes lets you walk through the swamp so that your faith in him, your reliance on him, your communication with him is better at the end once you go through all of this mess than it was at the beginning. I have no doubt that there are so many people in this county, in this region, in this state, country, and world whose faith will grow because they have seen God work in their life through this disease pandemic. So God works to us in times of comfort when we've experienced something we can help others go through the same thing. God works through us in times of suffering when our faith is tested go through difficult times, we always come out better in the end as a result of the trying process because our faith is purified in Jesus. And the third way that Christ shows up is that he shows up in movements and awakenings. For those of you who are old enough, who lived through September 11th, 2001, that was a very horrific time in our country. After that moment, churches recorded their highest attendance in decades. Sure, people were frightened. They didn't know what was going on. But a movement was sparked through a difficult time. Of course, we didn't want to lose the loved ones that we did that, that tragic day. But a movement was sparked. A movement in our churches was awakened because of a tragedy. Churches grew. People were discipled. Fears were comforted. And the life of the church was able to grow because of September 11th. Again, we're not downplaying the significance or the, the negative effects of that day, but Christ showed up in a big way and a movement was sparked as a result of that. In this moment, Christ will spark an awakening. Our churches will be stronger. The ways in which we disciple will be stronger. The faith foundation that all ministries have will be rooted deeper because we looked back and said, God, you were able to guide us through a difficult time. There is nothing that you can't do. There's nothing that you won't do for us. I want to leave you today with a scripture verse. It comes from 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. And I'm going to paraphrase it here to hit on some key points. This is Paul writing to the church in Corinth. He says this, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is merciful and is the source of all comfort. 
He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. Comfort. How about that? We are confident that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in the comfort that God gave us. Then you can patiently endure the same things we suffer. How about that? We think you ought to know about the trouble we went through in a particular province. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. But as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely on God. And he rescued us from mortal danger, and he will rescue us again. We've placed our confidence in him, and he will continue to rescue us. You are helping us by praying for us that many people will give thanks because God has graciously answered so many prayers for our safety. That particular verse kind of wraps up this idea. We don't like living in negative times, going through rough times, seeing people pass away from a disease. But as Christians, may we take heart may we know that first god does not create evil evil and god cannot coexist because god is holy perfect sinless blameless sin is not they can't exist so god has nothing to do with sin but number two god allows sin and its effects to take place so that his name will be glorified through us and in us for his kingdom and for his purposes. No one likes seeing this coronavirus spreading around like it does, but we do know that because of this and because that Christ shows up in moments of trouble, we can comfort others, our suffering can lead to better faith, and we can spark a new movement for the Christian faith. Let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you for allowing our faith to be tested and to be purified through these difficult times. We lift up those people who are fighting the disease for us. We say a special prayer for everyone who has been affected by this disease. Know that we are with them, that we are, are praying for their health to get better. And Father, we thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus, who is able to give us comfort so we can comfort others who is able to help us through moments of difficulty so our faith in you will be stronger and that we realize that it is time for a new awakening of your children to help this area, country, and world see the love and light that you offer. It's in your name that we pray. Thank you for joining me in this latest video devotion. I hope to see you again soon.